My father, John J. Flanagan, arrived in New Bedford uh, from Lawrence, Mass. His parents were from Ireland. My mother came from Ireland with the, her parents. She arrived in New Bedford relatively early in the, early in the 19th century, uh, and they were directly hit, came to New Bedford from Ireland. My father first, when he came here, was one of uh, six children, uh, and he and the others all worked in the mills because that was the thing that was really booming at the time in the city of New Bedford. Uh, he worked a couple of years there and found out that he liked, he liked to work for himself. I don't think he could stand the uh, hours in the mill and so forth, so he opened up himself to be a wholesale confectioner, candy business, and he met my mother, Annie V. O'Donnell. The, the Depression of the the really 30s and into the 40s began. It was a very difficult time. There were a lot of people that could not get work. There was a lot of people, families, that were very, very put upon to make ends meet. Uh, God bless the uh, churches, the St. Vincent de Paul societies, uh, for their activities of bringing food, clothing, and so forth to the knee all through that all through that period. I knew that World War II was uh, right in, in the makings and uh, the, uh, my brother Dan had already gone and uh, that I soon would be eligible to go. I was three years in the Air Force in all the regards in the United States and war and uh, I was very happy to be honorable discharge from Westover Field in 19, late 1945. I came out of the service and I went to uh, school and finishing up at New Bedford Tech two years to get a degree uh, in uh, science. Uh, and then I went to Bridgewater State Teachers College uh, for two and a half years uh, to get my uh, degree in education. Uh, I then uh, went to work for the city of New Bedford for five years in teaching. and. Uh, then right after that, uh, Dr. John Foster gave me a position at the New Bedford Institute of Technology, which later became, of course, with the Durfee Tech, became the University of Massachusetts at Dartmouth. I spent 29 years at the University of North Dartmouth, and many then I was a founder of the, the placement for, for seniors and, and graduate students there. For 25 years, I was a coach of basketball. For five years, I did a jack of uh, I was a jack of trade, but master of none. But it was a great, great uh, job. I enjoyed it very much for the 29 years. Today, as far as the future of New Bedford is concerned, I am one that has good thoughts about it. You know, all you can hear is uh, a lot of bitching sometimes, but that uh, that's easy to do. Uh, take take a look at. The people that are in public office today, in the mayor's office for the last few years, they've tried very hard. It's been a very, very difficult time to get other industries and things back here, but uh, with the coming of the university becoming more technologically oriented, uh, with the Bethlehem Vocational School given uh, a great, a lot, a lot of the high schools are, are, are turning out now people that are qualified, they know they have to go on to school. I've been very lucky in my life. I had a wonderful family bringing me up. I am from New Bedford area, and I grew up here. Uh, and my family uh, came from Portugal, uh, different parts of Portugal, and moved to New Bedford. And uh, at the turn of the century, came, my father's parents were from St. Michael and uh, m my mother's parents were uh, uh, from Gorver. Uh, New Bedford was their choice of place to come to and to make a new life for themselves. My great-grandparents uh, came here uh, with those good intentions and uh, to find a better life for themselves and, of course, for their families to be. Uh, my parents uh, got married in uh, 
1945. Also had a very uh, meek beginning, but uh, my father uh, uh, worked in trucking and then eventually into sales. And my mother uh, started also again in manufacturing, but then worked for the uh, Compass Bank in New Bedford. And she uh, eventually became the auditor of the bank. New Bedford was for me, uh, a great place to grow up. I, uh, I grew up in the South End uh, on George Street uh, in New Bedford, and it was uh, a wonderful place to grow up. Um, we had all the schools, the tenements that were there. Uh, everyone, every family knew each other. My brother, uh, very proud of him, he went uh, to, uh, at the time in the 70s, to Vietnam and uh, he came back to New Bedford because this is where he wanted to uh, come back to. He felt these were his roots and ultimately became a firefighter for New Bedford and uh, then became a firefighter myself in 1972. Um, I was a firefighter for 20 years before I ultimately had to retire because of a health condition. I've seen a uh, spectrum of changes to New Bedford uh, through the years. Uh, mostly moving forward and getting through uh, very difficult times uh, as we all have with the economy and for other reasons. Uh, and those transitions uh, have always, uh, I felt, uh, moved forward. Downtown especially um, is now a, just a great area like it, it was when I was growing up with the theaters and all the wonderful things that we did, just going to shop at Star Store, our cherries, and this was the place to, uh, now it now come back to because you have UMass Dartmouth, you have BCC, you have the, this different community, uh, but yet it brings that excitement back to the downtown area. I have lived most of my life in New Bedford. The way that I got here, was my great-grandparents. They came from Portugal, the islands, Madeira Islands, and that's on my Portuguese side. And on the French side, I'm Quebecois, and my grandmame and grandpapé came over from Quebec. They came from trois and they went to Vermont. There was no work there, so they followed, like everyone else, down to the mills and they found work at the New Bedford Mills, which is where both my Meme and my Pepe worked, at the Nashuina Mills and the Nonquip Mills. My father is French, my mother's Portuguese, and I'm third generation born here. My father is from the North End, which was basically the French end, and my mother was from the South End, which was basically the Portuguese end. My father crossed over the line, and he married a woman from the South End in New Bedford. She was one of 13 children. My father was the oldest of five children. They actually met at the Cornell Dublier where they both worked. My mother was a secretary there. And he used to pass by her every day on the way to work, going upstairs. He worked on second floor. He'd watch her. When she went to the bubbler, he'd run down the stairs, turn the bubbler on, lean against the wall and say, can I buy you a drink, ma'am? She thought he was a pest, but four years later they got married and had six children. They lived in apartments for a while, but moved to public housing, and they lived in two different places for public housing, which afforded people the opportunity to save to be able to buy a house. And in 1966, he bought his house in Pine Hill Acres at the furthest of the city in the North End of New Bedford. My father continued working at the Cornell Dublier, and he went to school at nighttime and he became an electronics engineer. Since he was 17 years old, he had signed up for the service and he was in the National Guards. Vietnam came and he got activated. In 1969, he went to Vietnam. He came out of Vietnam, rose up the ranks, and he retired as a Brigadier General. The memories I have when I was young in New Bedford and what New Bedford means to me and what I still hold today is family and community. 
When I was younger, my mother used to just let us out the back door and she knew that the neighbors would watch us and she didn't have to worry about anything. That was in the projects, that was in the apartment buildings and that was where, where we lived. I've seen many changes in the city. I've seen it be stagnant. I've seen it fight for growth. But what I see now is big changes and I see it growing and I see it growing towards where it was before. You see, the Portuguese people came here and through the fishing community made it number one in the world. Following that, the Cape Verdean people came here and made it number one again. And now the people that are here, such an eclectic bunch, are trying and striving real hard, trying to work together to make it something to be proud of once again. I am French Canadian and Cape Verdean. I am from New Bedford. Um, uh, my story, my family story goes back at, to uh, the whaling days in New Bedford where my great great grandfather, my great 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 grandfather was the first Cape Verdean to own his own whaling boat and then also was then the last, I don't know if it was this, I don't know if it was him or his son, he or his son, that was actually the last whaler, Cape Verdean whaler in New Bedford. And then my French Canadian side goes back to my grandmother, my grandfather, and their family coming down from Canada, the French part, where uh, in 1918 my grandmother was born. Growing up, they worked, uh, my, my grandmother, Yvonne, was a hairdresser. My grandfather was an accountant, and when he went to go fight off in World War II, he was a uh, interpreter, a French interpreter over in France. He would tell people that he fought the war, uh, fought the war with pen and paper by writing down the interpretations for the French and the American English armies. My grandmother was a, a secretary in the school system, and my grandfather was a teacher at the old Keith, and then was a principal of Roosevelt Junior High School. Growing up, so there are many, many people in New Bedford that are familiar with my with the uh, principal Alwyn Griffith. <laughs> um, my mom and my father. Also, uh, my mom went to school Denise through St. Anthony's. Denise Mayu, now Denise Griffith. She uh, St. Anthony's from kindergarten all the way up through uh, graduation until she went to college, where and then she became a social worker and she is still a social worker helping people the south coast here in New Bedford and all the way through Taunton, Attleboro and Fall River and Plymouth. I started, I've been bartending now for 11 years in downtown New, New Bedford and the, I, through that time I've watched New Bedford come from the, the, it was the end of the really bad part of New Bedford when, it, when I first started bartending. There were still a lot of really not nice bars. Um, and then for, but up to now, it's done a complete 180, and in that time is when UMass, Dartmouth moved downtown, as well as BCC, and with their art programs and just the schools, and they've continued to grow and flourish, and the, the, the amount of young people that have now infected downtown and that are staying there and spending their money and, and bringing life back into downtown, what it used to be, what, what, uh, what it used to be before the Dartmouth Mall opened up, and our parents used to, how they used to experience, with, experience it, but... Uh, New Bedford's come a long way and it, it's continually starting to grow and there's more and more things happening economically. I can only see it getting better. Uh, my grandfather came from the island of Fogo in Cape Verde. And as a matter of fact, all four of my grandparents were born in Cape Verde. Uh, they came between the years of 1899 and 1919. Uh, my grandfather, on my father's side, his name was Antonio Cantu Barbosa. He came in 1906. He came aboard the Zelmira, uh, a package ship. And uh, the history of Cape Verdeans coming to America, of course, we, we came as whalers. And we believe that my, my grandmother on my father's side, her brother was a whaler who came to America first. We have very little information on him. His name was Luis Santos, but he probably came in the 1890s and then he sent for his sister, uh, my grandmother. The majority of Cape Verdean families that live in New Bedford um, 
came between the years of 1860 and 1922, when immigration from Cape Verde almost came to a halt. Um, my family is typical of that, that immigration, and New Bedford is really considered the Ellis Island for Cape Verdeans. When most Cape Verdeans came to America, they came through New Bedford, and many of them stayed here, uh, like, like my family. And uh, we're a part of the history of this city. Um, all of my grandparents uh, spoke only Creole when they came. So they learned English when they were here, like many of the Cape Verdean families. Uh, I think our family is very typical of other Cape Verdean families uh, in that generation where most Cape Verdeans have some connection to the sea. My father had seamen's papers. He worked at sea. Uh, some cave earners worked on tugboats. My, my wife's uh, father worked for Exxon for 38 years. Around 1942, my father enlisted in the Army. Uh, this was during the Second World War. And uh, many cave Verdeans, um, many cave Verdean men uh, fought in the Second World War. There were many that fought in the First World War as well. Uh, I love the city of New Bedford. Um, it's the city that I spent my whole life in. I was a teacher here for 35 years. Um, my four children were all born here in New Bedford. I think it's one of the great places to, to raise a family. Uh, I think that uh, being Cape Verdean and many people know about our heritage in the city of New Bedford, I think it's, it's a real advantage. And I think Cape Verdeans have played a, a special role or a particular role in building the city to, to what it is. And it's, you can see it all around the city today. You can see it within the Whaling Museum. Uh, you can see Cape Verdeans in many different positions today that uh, was not, uh, didn't happen before. My great-grandparents Johan Gunderson and Alfred Larson were fishing off the coast of New Bedford when World War II broke out. They were separated from their family for about uh, seven years before uh, the war ended and a few years after that when they could bring my great-grandmothers uh, to join them in the United States. In 1951, my grandfather, Gunnar Gunderson, came with his family from Norway to join my great-grandparents because the economics here were far better than they were in the depressed economy in Norway. Even though he didn't speak a word of English, my grandfather had a job at Norlantic Diesel as a machinist and took classes at New Bedford Institute of Technology in drafting as well as English. Eventually, he got enough money together to start his own business. Him and his partner, Jens Ulrichsen, started Scandia Propeller. They had bought an, um, the old Thompson Propeller Shop in Fairhaven across the street from D.N. Kelly's and turned it into their own propeller shop and hydraulics. My dad, who was born in Norway, had stayed here in New Bedford, learning the trade that my grandfather had started. He met my mom in New Bedford and chose to start a family, and we, me and my brother, have stayed in the area as well. We both work at Scandia Propeller, and it's definitely a family business, and we still work with the fishing industry here in New Bedford. Um, New Bedford has changed over the years since my great-grandparents started, um, had lived here but in very positive ways, I think. I think due to the fishing industry, we have seen waves upon waves of immigrants coming for this particular industry. Oh, growing up, I remember New Bedford not really being too happening. I mean, there was a few things. There was the Star Store that had the amazing escalator that I remember as a child running up and down it. Um, but then there was a period when I was in high school that really nothing was going on, and it was just kind of dead downtown. Um, but 
within the past 10, 15 years, there's definitely life in, in downtown New Bedford. There's a thriving artist community. There are restaurants. You can choose your Portuguese restaurant for every day for a month and not visit the same one. There's bistros, there's clubs, there is live music. There's a lot of things happening now that weren't happening um, you know, 25, 30 years ago. 